Hello everyone, in this video I'll be reading and reacting to the r ask reddit thread for dumb jokes that make people want to groan. So this is going to be a fun one. <laughs> so first off we got why are there fences around a graveyard? Everyone's dying to get in. That is, yeah, that's a groaner. <laughs> uh, why did the pony ask for water right before his big speech? He was a little horse. <laughs> I'm a little horse right now. That's <laughs> that's funny. I have a yearly New Year's tradition that all my kids and wife groan and tell me to stop. After the ball drops, I'll declare that I'm very tired. After all, I haven't slept all year. <laughs> then I'll note how hungry I am because I haven't ate all year. I'll keep repeating the same dumb joke over and over again until everyone is sick of it. Then I make one more joke. That's a classic. <laughs> <laughs> You always see at least one Instagram post with that caption during New Year's Eve, so that's that's a pretty funny one. What does he stand? Next, two ovens were baked. Two muffins were baking in an oven. One turns the other and says, "Holy crap, it is hot in here." The other muffin says, "Holy shit, a talking muffin." <laughs> that's funny. Yep, that's a good one. Where does the general keep his armies? In his sleeveys. That's a classic. These are all ones that I've heard a long time ago. That's, that's, a, <laughs> I guess that's why it makes people groan because they're like, they're old jokes. I have a great knock knock joke, but you have to start it. Knock knock. Who's there? Goose. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that one goes. I've heard that joke before in many different renditions. So I'll tell you my, f no, I don't want that one. <laughs> hey kids, want to hear a dirty joke? Two white horses fell in the mud. That is pretty dirty, I guess. For my 12-year-old self, what can't a baby chick speak chicken? This is not allowed to use foul language. <laughs> wow, that's, that's, I haven't heard that one before. That's cool. A blind man walks into a bar and a chair and a table. That's a groaner because it's not really a goody, not really a good funny joke. What do you call a medieval spy? surveillance <laughs> that's good that's a good joke what happened when the aliens from omega-3 attacked earth not much the damage was superficial oil <laughs> superficial <laughs> that's a good one i like that i think that's the funniest one because that you need to think about that joke that's good <laughs> crap joke thread yeah we'll go with two more how do hillbilly celebrate pump halloween Oh my, no. <laughs> a three-legged dog walks in a saloon and says to the bartender, I'm looking for the man who shot my paw. That's, <laughs> that's a good one. That's like a double entendre. That's cool. All right, that's the end of that thread. It wasn't as good as I was thinking it was, but some of those were pretty funny, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be reading and commentating on Ask Reddit, what's the dumbest myth people believe today? So this is an interesting one because there's a lot of myths up there that I see people sharing on Facebook and isn't actually true. So, number one, if you drop a penny off a skyscraper, it will eventually fall fast enough to puncture someone's skull. By that logic, raindrops would hurt like a, or straight up kill you, not to mention hail. Yeah, that's true. Um, I've met people who think terminal velocity is the speed at which an object can kill you. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's a good one. Um, there are dumber ones out there, but I, as an estate lawyer, deal with some deal with constantly is the idea is that there needs to be a reading of the will where the family all gather together and the lawyer reads it aloud for the first time. We don't do that. We just mail everyone their own copy if they want it. It's really stubborn. It's a really stubbornly persistent one because people continue to see scenes of it in movies and TV shows where it can be used some dra big dramatic reveal. I even had irate beneficiaries insist that the administration of the estate can't be official until there's a reading. Way, way back, like 150 years ago, I believe we used to do something like that. At times, you couldn't exactly presume the literacy of the person of the beneficiaries, but now we feel it's pretty safe that you can either read or find someone that can. That's interesting. Yeah, you do see it in movies and TV shows a lot, so... This is a good one. I'm glad I got to cover this because this poor lawyer, <laughs> hopefully some people reviewed this video and now know that that's not a thing that needs to be happening. Um, drug dealers will give you free drugs, give you hooks. Still waiting for this in a 59. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Um, black belts have to register their fists as weapons. I can't believe I was dumb enough to fall for that one. <laughs> that's a good one.
That's funny. Um, if you walk around with hands in your pocket, do they become just concealed weapons? That's funny. Tear here to open. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Sometimes I rip it and it's like... Tsh! You just rip the top off. It doesn't really open it. You're in therapy. What? I don't even know. Can't comment on that. Detox drinks. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Juice cleanses as well. Um, yeah, I used to work somewhere I used to sell juice cleanses. Um, I see this one a lot, especially with some multi-level marketing companies that have these, this cleanse, it'll make you feel better. No. <laughs> your liver is your detox. If your liver is functioning properly, you're detoxing 24-7. Eat healthy food. Drink water. Don't eat a bunch of sugar. And your body will detox itself. It is believed in Indian culture that keeping your uni brow means good luck. I kept from my uni brow for 20 years thinking it's my good luck until I got stage fifth of kidney filler and I did my eyebrows after that because who gives a crap about luck anymore? Now my eyebrows look cute. <laughs> Why? Uni brow. Interesting. Well, good to see that that myth is busted. Uh, I'm growing mine and I guess I can shave it now. That you eat spiders in your sleep. A spider will not walk, wa willingly walk into a predator's mouth. They can sense both the heartbeat, heart, heat, and noise from humans. All those things alert them to not go into our mouth. Yeah. For some reason, I uh, see this one all the time. People think you eat like eight spiders a year or something. I'm glad that, that one's not true. And it makes sense. Why would an animal go willingly into a predator's mouth? I remember the myth that gum takes seven years to fully pass through your digestive system. Yes, for some reason, people still share this like it's fact. And it's, I don't understand. <laughs> people are crazy. Not sure this one fits here exactly, but the McDonald's hot coffee lawsuit becoming a frivolous case filed by a money-hungry customer. A poor lady was a real victim who suffered legitimate injuries who only wanted her medical cost covered. Yeah, this one is crazy. I've seen it. Um, I've seen a lot of people freaking out about this lady being like, oh, she wants money. But it was like, I don't even want to go into the details because it was really gruesome what happened to her. But, like, the burns really did burn her and infused her body together. It was very bad. Yeah, I feel bad for that lady. Um, For some reason, yeah, I guess that is a myth. People believe that she was money hungry. No, she just wanted medical costs covered. That people's hands are eventually going to be useless. They keep cracking their knuckles. Yep, I agree with that one. <laughs> um, Headlights off at, an, at night is a gangbanger initiation, right? So don't flash your lights at them interesting um yeah <laughs> at some point of our video allegedly proved that egg buttons that cross ones are just placebos some of them are but most of them really do cycle for the pedestrians to get a walk signal you should use them regardless yeah like if you don't press the uh walk button it's not going to sometimes give you that walk symbol at least here in canada so i mean there's probably some that are placebo but the great majority that i've used you do use them so Shaving makes your hair grow back thicker. My 37-year-old partner believes this and still does my nut in. Um, yeah, it, it's going to make it look thicker because, like, they do get tapered down at the edges. But when you shave it, it's going to be thick and then it'll end up tapering down over time. That's a good one. There's still be people that believe that having sex in certain positions or eating certain foods can influence the sex of your unborn child. Yeah, like, that's silly because it's a sperm that dictates the, you know, sex. <laughs> Funny. Humans only use 10% of their brain. This is false regardless of who pro proclaimed this myth seemingly demonstrate that it is in fact true. I think it's because that myth, that meme of uh, Morgan Freeman, it's like, what if we only use 10% of our brain? And I think that's what got people thinking that that's actually true. So, <clears throat> oh, I don't want to raise, make more money because then I'll lose more money in taxes and take home less. You only get tax on the money that made above your current bracket. It's literally impossible to make more money and take home less. Yeah, that's that is true. Just that's how taxes work. <laughs> um, my tax law professor's response: Okay, fine, give me the money and I'll pay the tax on it. Yeah, true. Also, I want to follow up on that last one. Um, people say that if you make charitable donation donations, that you're only doing it to get into the lower tax bracket. That's not true because you're actually giving away your money, and you know, there's certain instances like Walmart asking people to donate on behalf of them. That, yes, that is, they're trying to reduce their taxes. But for companies that, you know, put their own money in, like if they donate $10,000, they're reducing their income by $10,000. Uh, yeah, it's going to reduce their taxes, but they also lost $10,000. And I think that's the part most people skip is the fact that they lost the $10,000. <laughs> yeah, they're going to pay less money because that's 10 k less, but they're still donating. That's what I wanted to rant a little bit about because I see it all the time 
people will still believe that leave hymens are like plastic food seals that cover up the hole and can pop when you have sex for the first time. The girl doesn't believe she's not a virgin. Yeah, it's just a thin piece of tissue. You can, yeah, tear it. Yeah. I don't know anatomy enough to really, or women's anatomy enough to be able to comment on that one. Halloween candy is commonly laced with drugs or razor blades. You know what I mean? No one is giving drugs to your eight-year-old for free. Those dare officials lie to me. Yeah, I mean, I'd still, if you're a parent watching this, check your Halloween candy that your kids are getting because there is a lot of crazy people out there. Um, but it's been hyped up and yeah, it doesn't happen as much, but it does happen. So I had to explain to a grown adult that blood isn't blue inside the body and red ones. His oxygen because blood already carries oxygen. <laughs> That's funny. Some people are not that wise. They read one thing one time and they think they know everything. Anything about MSG? I battle with health conscious wife about this often. Too much of anything is bad for you. Yep. Um, MSG, it was overhyped as it comes from a chemical name. Um, but everything is a chemical. So, I mean... I'm not saying go eat a bunch of MSG, but I think that there was a lot of hype around it that it's the worst thing ever for you, and it turned out to not be the worst thing ever for us. People think bats are blind. They aren't. Hmm. I'm blind as a bat. People say that all the time. It's funny. That black cats are evil. Yes, people still do think that. It's why they're not allowed to be adopted around Halloween, because people just used to abuse. What? That's so sad. Black cats are cute. I like it. I'm going to read a couple more, and I'll end this video. And if you touch a baby bird, the mother will abandon it because of the smell. Birds actually have a very crappy sense of smell. Yes, there's exceptions. Vultures have a sense of smell, but in general, smelling their baby won't make them abandon them, as far as I'm aware. Good to know it. That he who smelt it, dealt it. This is the defense of the guilty. Yep. If you farted and you say he who smelt it, dealt it, you probably farted yourself. And you're just trying to, you know, you're trying to trick these poor people into believing that you didn't fart. But, yeah, I'm going to end that video there. Um, these are some interesting myths that people believe today somehow but um i can't guarantee the validity of any of this stuff in this <laughs> ask reddit thread but i just want to commentate on it thank you so much for watching smash the like and subscribe i'll see you in the next one hello everyone in this video i'll be reading reacting and commentating to the ask reddit thread on inexpensive purchases that have significantly improved your life number one shoehorn for boots yeah shoehorns are cheap and <laughs> yeah if you have boots that are hard to get on that helps a lot i like that answer it's nice uh reusable water bottle saves money in the environment i agree um and get a filter jug for the fridge next level hydration boom two of them that are great personally i like i have a stainless steel shaker cup that i use all the time i wish it was close by um i got a couple of actually stainless steel ones like the plastic ones are good but if you get a shaker cup that's metal amazing period undies can't relate but probably very nice um, a Bluetooth transmitter for my car so I listen to songs that I want to. Yeah, that's a nice one. Um, or an aux cord, things like that. Very sweet. And especially for cars that don't have aux cords, you can get that Bluetooth receiver. Connects to your stereo system. Um, you can set to like 99.9 .9 FM or whatever. 10-foot phone charger cord. I like those, but I think some of them get annoying at times. Like, I like having a long one on my Mac, but I don't like having a long one for my phone because that's just a bunch of cable like it's all wired up. Could be useful, though. Um, coffee maker with an automatic timer. Seems small, but it's so nice to come downstairs in the morning. Your coffee is just waiting for you. Yeah, this is uh, this is one I like, too, because, as the second comment says, realizing, oh, this is why everyone has one of these. So nice to just go downstairs and your coffee is there, and you're like, oh, nice. Medication to manage my anxiety symptoms. That's a good one. Um, if you have anxiety, you should be going and talking to a doctor or a therapist to help out with that, because it's tough. I bought this giant tire of Ceratops Squishmallow, oh my god. As an autistic person, this is one of the best things to just go home to after a long day of school, and I'm just overwhelmed, I can sit, I got the shakes because the stuff happened in school, and it's amazing to just go home, sit in bed, and flop on a giant Squishmallow. Holy crap, the sensory thing I needed to improve my... I love my Squishmallows, I got two of them. One is iced tea, and one of them is ice cream. <laughs> and I love my Squishmallows, they're great. I kind of want the Pokemon ones. Active noise cancelling headphones, those are cool. Um, I've used them. And it's nice to just be able to ignore people having headphones in. <laughs> LASIK eye surgery cost me 3K 17 years ago. One of the best investments I've ever done. That's interesting. Um, so I've had my father. He got LASIK eye surgery. It only lasted him one year, though. So your mileage may vary with something like this. Did it get rid of the squiggly lines when you look into the sky? Oh, interesting. A sleep mask? Yeah, for some people, I don't like the claustrophobic feeling I get from having a sleep mask on my eyes and squeezing. I don't know. Not for me, but it could be for someone. 
Although inexpensive is subjective, I say 1K for a new mattress. Has a degenerative dis- disease caused me nothing but issues with my back and leg. Went from two hours of sleep a night to a solid eight hours most nights. Quality is life-changing. Yeah, a good mattress. I just completely destroyed mine, so yeah, going to need a new one. <laughs> uh, whenever I was going through surgery, I just flopped on my bed a lot, and it destroyed the springs of the mattress. From, <laughs> I was heavy. Oof. Humidifier. Yes. Um, if you actually opposite problem too, if you have a very hydro, very wet place, a dehumidifier is useful in places like a basement where mold can happen. I have eczema from dry skin or dry air humidifiers help me, but also dehumidifiers keep the house in the summer. Nice. A wireless mouse for my laptop clutch. They're only like $10 on Amazon house plants. Yeah. Um, if you can keep them alive, that's definitely a nice one. Good running socks. Totally. Earplugs. Mosquito net for bed. If you're outside sleeping, yeah. A bidet. I heard that those are really good. <laughs> it keeps your butt clean. And you don't have to use paper t- or uh, toilet paper as much. So that's pretty good. Um, I might I might get one. That's nice. Melatonin gummies. Oh. Some people say they work. Some people don't. I use melatonin for like 10 years. And I stopped. And I don't really notice any difference. So that one, your mileage may vary. I'll read a couple more. And then I'll end this video. A double shirted shower curtain hooks instead of rings. Nice. A Ninja Foodie air fryer. Air fryers are amazing. You can cook food so quick in them. Um, they're very useful. Love that. Induction rice cooker. Yeah, rice cookers are nice too. There it is for the top inexpensive purchase that changed your life significantly on Ask Reddit. Thank you so much for watching. Smash like. I'll see you in the next one. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be reading and commentating on the Ask Reddit thread on what are some telltale signs that someone is a selfish person. So we're going to figure out what makes a person selfish. So, first one here says, doesn't think they're in the wrong in the slightest bit. They can't shoulder any bit of responsibility. Now, this is actually a pretty common one, I feel like, and uh, some people honestly just don't feel like they do any wrong, and that's dangerous. You should be able to self-reflect on your decisions and think about the impact it's had on other people some people just can't it's tough <laughs> i don't get some people but another way you can tell if someone's a selfish person if every bad thing you do to them is drama worthy every bad thing they do to you are details and should be moved on from and why can't you just do that you're so dramatic <laughs> why can't you just move on and forgive me yeah that's a classic one right there so yeah, every bad when every bad thing you do to a person is very dramatic, but if they just gloss over the things they've done to you, not saying to do bad things to people, but if it's you're in this situation, this is kind of something you relate to, you'll understand. Oh, this is a big one. Juicy. They gladly take any favors you do for them, but when asked if they could reciprocate once, they get defensive and aggress and or aggressive and act like you're the selfish one for daring to expect something in return. Doesn't make you a bad person to expect reciprocation in a relationship with someone else, romantic or platonic. Relationships are a give and take, and that's what makes them healthy. It's not entitlement to expect kindness if you give kindness. If you're only the if you're the only one giving, you don't, you're being taken advantage of. That is true. Relationships are kind of a two way street. If you're always like, like I think of it like the emotional bank account. If you're making deposits into people's bank account, you're able to make some withdrawals. For some people, they like to just continue making withdrawals and then not really a good friend, you know? So, yeah, that is, that's a solid one. Very long. I'm not going to read the rest of it. Oops. They bring nothing to the potluck, but are first in line. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> if you know it's a potluck and you're not bringing food and you're there trying to stuff your face, you're selfish. <laughs> they respond how worse their situation is when you're sharing their problems with them. No try for helping or listening. Just trying to draw attention to their side. Angry emoji. I agree. And that's something that I cut these people off. Like, it's so hard whenever someone's trying to one-up you constantly. Like, that one-up mentality, some people just have. And it's, like, for achievements, but also, like, whenever you have a problem. Like, I went, recently went through three surgeries for a pec tear, and it was pretty bad. But I, like, it's been two years now, and I was in the hospital for five months. But I had some people that were... Telling me that they strained their pack and telling me how bad it is. Um, I'm trying to one up me in a sense when I'm like, <laughs> like just in the hospital. Really weird, but for some reason people like to do that. I don't know if they think they're being like they're contributing to conversation or what it is, but very selfish behavior. <laughs> I tell you, 
Littering, 100%. If you litter, you're a terrible person. You should not litter. Littering is bad. <laughs> yeah. I li- li- uh, I can't stand people that litter. I will literally carry garbage in my pocket for 100 miles. I don't care. Don't litter. <laughs> when every single bad thing that happens to another person gets spun around into their personal problem. Example, I'm really upset because my friend's family member is going through X. Yeah, like this is a kind of weird one when people just try to draw the attention to themselves. And um, I don't know why people do it, but it is somewhat of a common thing. If they always talk about themselves, that is actually a pretty good telltale sign that someone is selfish. Because if they can't think about other people, or if they're just talking negatively about other people and positively about themselves, then they are kind of selfish. If you're in a group and there's one person that is constantly interrupting the middle of what you or anyone else is saying, generally to brag about themselves in a one-upper story, it's generally a precursor to stop associating with them. I've met too many of them in my day, and they're more often than not happy to throw you under the bus whenever the opportunity arises. This one like, seems like it's a bit personal to this person, but I kind of agree. Those one-upper type people, they just care about their own, like, they're insecure, I think it is, and they just want to be injecting themselves into situations whenever they can. And yeah, they'll throw you on their bus for sure. Yeah, I agree fully on that one. Conversations don't feel like conversations. They are one-sided. Talk about what they want, their thoughts, their life, their priorities, etc. Yeah, I agree. When you're able to slip a word in, your words are used in transitions in their dialogue. No matter how you format your words, they all just add to the plot of their story. What you say and what you do are pawns in their game. To be manipulated in a way that belittles your experiences, actions, opinions, and choices. This one seems like they've been hurt and someone else coming. I think you met my manager. <laughs> um, yeah, like if you can't have a conversation, it doesn't feel like very human. Um, especially what they address there. Probably a very selfish person. This one's got a lot of karma. They have a superpower to lead everything back to themselves. Yep, <laughs> we've seen this commonly in these answers. Even when you're actually talking about your own life or a specific problem of yours, they somehow make it that you start talking about them instead without even changing the topic. Yep, if someone's just constantly trying to redirect everything back to them, they're probably not a great person. They're probably a little bit selfish. And I think selfishness stems from being insecure. So a lot of these kind of sound like people that are insecure. Complaining at work to coworkers doing your work for you while you complain. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I feel like some very past jobs of mine, I've had people like this, and they're not fun to be around. I don't enjoy that, so I can understand that one fully. When they always play the victim card, 99% of the time, they only place themselves in the victim seat by ignoring all the effort or cost other people have to endure and only focus on what they go through themselves. Yep. Yeah, the victim card that is i don't know why nowadays more than ever there is people trying to victimize themselves in any situation like things that don't even associate with them and they're trying to victimize themselves that is 100 percent a selfish person right there so keep an eye out for people like that that's that's some very sus behavior <laughs> but it's very common too cliche answer but i found the return to the shopping return the shopping cart test to be pretty accurate it's such a small thing, but it does tell you if a person thinks small things like that matter. I agree 100%, and I actually seen someone about an hour ago leave the shopping cart. Annoys me. It annoys me a lot, and I don't know. It's such a small thing, but, like, if you don't do it, you're obviously just selfish. It takes a few seconds, and, like, you were already pushing the shopping cart around the, the mall or the grocery store, so why can't you put it back in the, the place that it goes? That really, that's a really good one. Like, it, yeah, it's cliche, cliche, but returning a shopping cart, like, it's not like a, this person says it's their favorite armchair measure of a good person. There's absolutely no benefit to you as a trolley returner, but there's loss to others if you don't. There's no immediate human association with how you treat a server or retail employer. Just raw, are you thinking about the other guy? I agree fully with that one. And it's, it's kind of funny. People always talk about this as like a test of being a good person, but I think it honestly is. I'm going to read through a few few more of these and then we'll end up the video. They never admit when they're wrong, even if there is physical evidence. Yep, that is annoying when people lie like that, usually a selfish person. They don't remember the times people helped them, but they clearly remember all the times they have helped others. Yep, if they 
turn the focus to other people in those situations, all the bad on others, only the good on themselves. Agreed. I love these threads. I always use them as a way to measure whether I'm doing these things or not and fix them if I am. Yeah, it's actually good. Hey, that is not a selfish person right there. You know, if you're <laughs> this person making a joke, I made it about yourself. But hey, if you're self-reflecting on your own values and how you treat other people, then you're taking the first steps into becoming, you know, a less selfish person and a better person as a whole. So I agree with that one fully. But that's it. That's all for our answers today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello, everyone. In this video, I'm going to be going through the Ask Reddit thread and commentating on what's a modern-day poison people willingly ingest. So this is an interesting one to me because there's a lot of things out there that people are taking that are actually harming them. Number one, personally, I'm horrendously addicted to nicotine. It's probably killing me. Yeah, nicotine is tricky. I unfortunately got addicted to vaping, unfortunately. I was in between surgeries because I couldn't really work out the same that I used to be able to work out. I was having a lot of issues and the stress was piling up. I started vaping and it was a very difficult thing to quit, but I did quit when I was having some more surgeries because you can't really do nicotine. Um, it slows down wound healing and I have a big nasty scar here that yeah, nicotine, not good for you. It slows down a lot of your processes in the body. It's definitely bad for you. And vaping in general, bad for you. Don't do it. Um, next, those talking videos with like three things happen on the screen simultaneously. Social media is already atrocious for attention span. And many of those distractions on the 36 clip exponentially enhance that problem. Yeah, that's, that's true. I see a lot of videos actually similar to this, Ask Reddit, but it has a text speech reading out the thing. And then there's someone Minecraft hopping around. I, yeah, Mark, Minecraft parkour in the background. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's getting to be bad because people's attention spans are garbage. Next, Facebook, Instagram, any social media where you're comparing your life against other people's lives. Definitely. It's hard not to compare yourself. Um, people need to learn to treat social media like a Photoshop image. It may look real, but it may not be. That is true. A lot of people are, <laughs> I would see a lot of fitness influencers actually getting outed for editing their pictures and like morphing in their waist and things like that. So if you're comparing yourself to people on social media, don't do yourself a huge favor and don't because that image is probably not real. And even nowadays, videos on Instagram are being edited so much. TikTok, things like that. I see a few creators that have like their fences are like warped in in the videos because they want their waist to look smaller. It's sad the way the world is going, uh, but don't compare yourself against others. It's usually all fake. Those short videos that are now on all platforms, if you have a problem with focus and getting crap done, you know that watching them, you might end up the next day without even realizing you haven't done anything yet. Yeah, if I see those, I just close them. But it says here, a creator on YouTube basically said, I have to resort to making these shorts, I disappear as a creator. Yeah, it's forcing it on everyone, basically. It's kind of sad. Um, that's why I want to make these videos where I'm talking about Ask Reddit and it's not just a hop and block. Just to inject my personality into this kind of stuff and still give it a, you know, talk about the answers that are interesting. Um, but those text to speech platforms, terrible 24 hours news cycle. Yep. My grandparents all day pains me to see I uh, older people I see watching news all the time and it news is never there to be good. You know, like it's always negativity and uh, focusing on problems, which is okay to watch the news, but some people watch the news way too long and it's definitely, it's definitely causing some issues mentally for people. Um, yeah, outrage is straight up. Poison your mental health. We thrive on it. Yearn for it. Places like TikTok, Twitter, and public freakout. Pass on like dealers for those looking for some attention. Poisoning people to feel better or worse. It's useful to, for those in control, so there's no escaping it. Political parties and activists need you outraged, one track, and immune to real empathy. Motivated to solidify their power, so here we are. Yes, they want outrage. That goes back to the 24-hour news cycle. Um, next one, I'm going to say vaping. I knocked it on the head as a New Year's resolution. For some, I've completely... Being nicotine free and still going strong, but I generally feel I was about to cough my lungs up about 90% of the time vaping. And if I have to be honest, I don't miss it either. I started vaping to stop smoking. I hate seeing young kids and teens do it, the ones that shouldn't even consider smoking. Yes, I agree. Uh, disposable vapes, yeah, juice vapes, any of that kind of stuff. Terrible, terrible, terrible for you. Um, and it's just being normalized so much nowadays that people just do it. And um, we're going to see a lot of things happen in 20 years time when the effects of vaping come out. Thankfully, I didn't do it for more than like six months, um, maybe nine months around there. Terrible, terrible, terrible for you. <laughs> Social media, another one. Yep. Social media is 
very toxic to people. Um, as I said, it's comparing others to yourself and they're usually edited. So this <laughs> energy drinks, um, I like myself a good energy drink. I got some G fuel here, Miami vice flavor, but, um, uh, yeah. Next follow-up comment, I ordered food from McDonald's, the cashier was like, that monster isn't good for your heart. Oh, is it not? Am I not making healthy choices at McDonald's? <laughs> um, yeah, that's funny. I would think the company policy wouldn't allow cashiers to say things like that as it could persuade a customer not to buy something. Yeah, that's, that's funny. Um, energy drinks, it's an interesting one. Um, caffeine is not, it's hard to say how damaging it is. They usually contain things like, uh, taurine to help it with the hydration of the muscles things like that yeah energy drinks i guess could be poison we don't know we just don't know some of these things don't have long studies done on them work five to six days a week and having no life yep and commuting i hate long drives that one rings true to me i think it's it's not good for us to be sitting in a car for that long and sitting in desks for that long I think the four-hour work week should be a thing um and expanded on but unfortunately corporate profits and greed won't allow that processed sugars that's a great one um cutting sugar back makes you feel a lot better yeah i cut sugar i don't try not to eat anything sugar related i do have the occasional sugar thing if i'm doing a review video on youtube but processed sugars are terrible for you um this is a long one i'm not even gonna go into it soda yep extremely harsh and self-hating words yes um, that is very true. A lot of people have negative mindsets and they always call themselves idiot, things like that. It's not going to be good for you long-term if you're speaking to yourself like that. <clears throat> Sips coffee, doom scroll, Reddit. Yeah, don't doom scroll. <laughs> uh, alcohol, very true. Alcohol is literally a toxin. It is a poison. So I'm going to end it there. These are some interesting mind opening ideas uh modern day poison that people are willing to ingest it feels like some of these are a daily thing for a lot of people it's kind of sad but yeah be mindful of what you do on a daily thank you so much for watching smash like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video hello everyone in this video i'll be reading and reacting to the ask reddit thread for if you could pick a hundred thousand dollars tomorrow or one million dollars in 10 years what would you pick it's an interesting one. I'm not sure what I would pick, but I want to see some ideas here and let's get into it. I'm 22 right now. So knowing that when I'll turn 32, I'll be a millionaire will allow me to prioritize much more now. That's a good one. Actually, that helped me change my idea because yeah, being able to be a millionaire in 10 years time is actually pretty nice if you think about it because you could plan and uh, wait, inflation, things like that. We'll, we'll go onwards. <laughs> I would take the money tomorrow. I'm 62 and a lot of people I know who are my age have died recently. I would put in, yeah, that's a good one. In the event of my death, my child would get the money. That's nice. Because, yeah, you never know. And, yeah, if he's betting on being 72 is a little bit tricky. And especially when you can have a surefire 100000 for your kid. That's good. I guess this is more age dependent. But I'm 26. So let's see here. I'm 43 and I would take the 100 k today. You just never know. Yeah, that's a... Um, that's good. That's a good one. I can see that. I'm 16. A lot of people my age died recently. I want to buy green bananas. I take the one million ten years. That'll cover my retirement. So I'm a bit of my spending my bit of my income now to live and enjoy those far holidays rather than wait. That's also a good point because if you know that it's coming and you're earning money, you can kind of take your foot off the brakes or take your foot off the gas a little bit and just relax and go on vacation. So that's a solid one. I like that a lot. 100,000 today or a million in 10 years. 1 million in 10 years. Even assuming you get a 10% compounded annually, the 100% of 100,000 would be worth just 259 in 10 years. And yeah, and getting that rate would be like really good. So <laughs> yeah, if you can get those rates with that much money, yeah, you're doing some right. The 100K because I'm 71 years old. Wow, I love the I love reading when older people are on Reddit. That always makes me really happy. The 100 1 million could be inherited, then the 1 million. Yeah, that that's a solid one. Like if you pass 1 million goes to kids. First that 100,000 tomorrow, but the million is guaranteed, so I should be able to borrow it against and get 100,000 tomorrow anyways. Yeah, that's a good point. If you like have a guaranteed account receivable a million and you can, you know, get a loan for 100000 and just live. It's a good point. 
Very good point. Wow, that's genius. For a lot of people, the utility of 100K today is more. It could get you through college, pay off debt, give your kids a nice place to live. That's true. I would pay off student loans, 100%. If you're getting a million in 10 years, you could just float the loans for a decade and get a big consolidated loan to take care of the problems in your life and pay it off in 10 years with a portion of the million. That is, yeah, like if you're in a good place to get a loan, I think that's the option. So <laughs> I'll keep this one short because it's just going to be people talking back and forth about two options. But what would you take? $100,000 today or a million dollars in 10 years? I think I would take the million in 10 years and then I would take try to take out a loan or just have the peace of mind knowing that when I am 36, I'll have a million dollars. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'll be reading through the Ask Reddit thread for podcasts that are worth listening to. So first off, we got the history of Rome. After the first few episodes where the sound production isn't great, it's just 20, 200 episodes of incredible story of the rise and the fall of the, empire, the Ro entire Roman Empire. The dude knows his crap. Actively will call out his own mistakes during the following episodes when he's wrong, which isn't often. He tells it like way better than textbooks. He doesn't. He almost never goes off the rails and talks about an irrelevant material. And when he does it's about baseball for like four seconds, he enjoys the topic and you can tell. That's cool. If you're wanting to learn more about Rome, that sounds like a good one. Well, there's your problem. A podcast about engineering disasters with slides. Ooh. I usually listen to one or two comedy podcasts, but none of them make me laugh as hard as two civil engineers. Proud sons of Philly and posh British woman discussing engineering and social societal disasters. Only one of them is a civil engineer. The other is a finance major because he's a good boy. <laughs> what? That's probably good if it's up your alley. I haven't heard of it before, but old oh, Hindenburg episode. That's probably the funniest thing I ever listened to. I, I would listen to that. Hindenburg's interesting moment in history. No such thing as a fish. Funny well being somewhat educational. Learned a lot about moss. Interesting. It's probably about nature. Normally funny podcasts. Educational, fascinating, fun facts to build up funny moments and punchlines. Cool. I think that's about nature. This is a new one, but if books could kill, two guys discuss and analyze best selling nonfiction books, and that could use a good dissection like Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and The Secret. Well researched and super funny, interesting, love it. That's cool. I like anything that like analyzes books because it kind of condenses the information down and then gives it to you. So that sounds cool. Darknet Diaries. Ooh, that's that's definitely gonna be an interesting one. Cyber security guy here. It's a lot of things writing cares about the community. That's good to hear whenever your talk comes to things like uh, podcasts. The old gods of Ale Appalachia. Ap Appalachia. Appa I don't know what the pronunciation is that. Appalachia is a good radio drama. The way the narrator speaks feels like you have trees grow on you. I'm obsessed with the podcast Will Kill You. This podcast will kill you. If you like the biology and human of diseases and illnesses, this is it. I've heard this one a few times, and it's, yeah, it's about, like, I guess, like, things that can kill you. Ill illnesses, which is interesting to think about. So, hardcore history. That's cool. I've heard of them as well. World War One series might be the best podcast I've ever listened to. Completely Walk My World. That'd be a good one to listen to. I agree. I haven't listened to that one, but... I'm adding a lot of these to my list. <laughs> I'm glad I did this one. The history of Rome. The rest is history. Hardcore history. Yeah, there's a lot of good podcasts for history buffs and people who want to learn more about history. I, I appreciate that kind of stuff. So that's cool. 99% invisible behind the bastards, but will question humanity. Interesting. A lot of people talking about that one. I love your wrong. I love you're wrong about. Okay, okay. Some of these, like, I wish it just said what it's about briefly. Knowledge fight. That's what actually happened each episode. This is actually happening. Each episode is about an experience someone really had and is told in their own voice. For example, one episode is about how a woman survived an apartment fire. Another is about how a woman who hit and actually killed a woman on the road. Definitely not an easy listen, but they're all important stories with the experiences. Yeah, that'd be that'd be some dark stuff, and I feel like that's 
a good idea for a podcast. If you want to start one, is just get pe- people to talk about their experiences because some people don't have a platform to share that with. So yeah, that is that's a good recommendation. I'm gonna end that there. That was a pretty cool. I got a lot I'm adding to what I need to listen to. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be reading through and reacting to Ask Reddit thread. What's a modern day scam that's become normalized and we don't realize it's a scam anymore? Love talking about scams, so let's get into it. Number one, employers insisting that employees not talk about their salaries and job listings not posing salaries. That is toxic. And yeah, in the US, it's illegal. You can't do that. Um, Yeah, I think all jobs should post a salary if you want people to apply as well as like you should be allowed to talk about that stuff. But yeah, some employers don't want them talking about that because it keeps them set in their ways, earning the money that they earn and not trying to explore higher routes or getting paid more. Terrible. Hidden fees, especially in the medical and hospitality industries. Yeah, that's annoying. Recent legislation called the No Surprise Act attempts to remedy this a little bit. Hospitals are now required to post their charges for common services online, among many other things. That probably just applies to America, but yeah, hidden fees are annoying, especially if you go to buy a hotel and you're like, oh, it's going to be $250 a night, and then it's another $50 for this, another $20 for that. Gets to become a real annoying real quick. Credit scores, they started in 1989 and are designed to encourage debt. Yeah, geez, I never thought about it like that. Um, credit scores are meant to be a measure of how likely I am, am I am to pay off a loan in the future. How come every time I pay off a loan, the score goes down? Fun fact, this does not exist in Europe, and when I moved to the States, it became one of those black mirrors already outdated moments. Jeez, yeah. Credit scores, a little funky. Not being able to cancel a subscription online. I can subscribe in five minutes, but I need to call your service agents, and I'm forced to be rude to them to cancel it, because as long as my voice sounds friendly, they try to resell the subscription. I, yeah, that's so annoying. Anytime I call them, you, you do kind of have to be rude. Like, I, I don't like being rude. I hate being rude. And, um... Uh, Sometimes you try to cancel it, like, oh, why don't you reconsider it, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, I, I called you to cancel this. I don't want it anymore. I don't want to spend money on this anymore. For some reason, I think it's obviously they're trying to retain as many people as possible. But, yeah, annoying. <laughs> yep. The fact you cannot just buy software now. You must buy a subscription and never actually own anything. Yep. Microsoft Office, annoying. Also, Photoshop and things like that, annoying. I don't like that. Just buy this. I wish you could just buy software for some things. Resort fees at hotels, hidden fees in general, agreed so much. Everything is a sneaky small monthly subscription. Yeah, it actually is. Like one time payment for apps and games used to be fine. Now you have to just keep paying. It's not good for anybody. It's so annoying. And a lot of companies are doing that. If you're a company watching this, don't do this, please. <laughs> Transaction fees when online banking. I do all the work filling out a form so a bank employee doesn't have to. Yet I get charged the same. Yep, annoying. Bank fees in general, like <laughs> I always find it funny. It's like, oh, you had a non-sufficient funds? Let us take money from you because you don't have any money. Ridiculous. Admin fees for completely automated services. Yeah, like buying a ticket for like a concert or something like that. So annoying. Free trial auto renewal services. Yep. Auto renewal subscriptions. So annoying. I don't... Free trials. I think there's legislation changing that now, but... Uh, subscription for already paid apps. Yeah, that's annoying. Like when you buy an app and you got to pay more to use different things in it. So annoying. Services with only monthly monthly subscriptions. Agreed. Another scam that's just modernized. Extended warranty. Make sure you read the fine print and see what is considered void. It is free though. God dang. I got a TV with a free two year warranty and broke after 23 months and I got a full refund. I mean, that's pretty good. <laughs> so yeah, it makes. Makes sense. Raising the product price of a product a day before they go on sale so people think they're getting a discount. It's illegal in Germany, but I see companies doing it all the time. It's like, oh, I, I normally buy this for $3.99. Why is it suddenly $5.99 on sale for $3.99? Like, crazy. Oh, this is going to be a juicy one. Health insurance plans that charge $500 to 1000 a month just to be insured. Then don't even start covering your bills until you paid another 2000 to 100000 out of pocket. And even then, we'll still make you pay a $70, $45 copay. And on the provider end, your plan is delaying payment on claims so that your $500 to $1,000 a month premium is just going to the pocket of executives and shareholders instead of healthcare providers. Behavioral health claims get the most abuse, just in case you were wondering why so many licensed psychotherapists opt out of accepting insurance. Yeah, 
insurance in general just seems like a scam at times, but I mean, sometimes you do need it. Uh, it just really depends what kind of healthcare and or what kind of insurance you need. Buying tech devices for premium prices and then still having to pay subscription to make them actually do what they're supposed to do. Um, this is the Volkswagen that you had to pay extra for heated seats. Yeah, not a fan of that. <laughs> Service charge for buying cinema tickets online. I've got to pay you to buy something from you. Yeah, that 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 annoys me. That annoys me so much. So, so much. For some reason, like, it's cheaper to go in and buy a ticket and waste employees' time versus just buying online when they have the, the capacity to be able to sell things online. Cinema, extra charge for going online. Bank, extra charge for not going online. Annoying. <laughs> medical insurance, not covering dental or vision. Like, it's all connected, guys. If you have badly abscessed tooth, you're, like, going to need medical care. Even if you have dental, that it covers the extraction of a root canal or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Um, like, your teeth are connected to heart health very, very much so. And uh, it doesn't make sense. Like, your teeth and your eyes, they are like, nope, that's separate from your health. Annoying. Razor blades, especially Gillette, thirty dollars for six of the new ones. Yep, I agree. Over expensive. Ticketmaster fees. Yep, I mentioned that earlier on my own. Definitely annoying. Free trials that automatically roll over to paid subscriptions. I worked at Spotify. We used to tell customers that it was mentioned the fine print on the free trial, implying that we are not reading observantly. But this print is so small, it's off after enough an afterthought. I felt disgusted when I was there. Imagine blaming the customers. Cancel your free trial as soon as you get them. Yeah, the free trial still runs course. Some of them don't, so be mindful. But yeah, set reminders in your phone even too. Charging a convenience fee for paying rent online. Yeah, geez, it's a little more convenient for you too. That's where's my convenience fee? <laughs> that is crazy. Ah, uh, tip your landlords. Instagram influencers using your kids as bait to advertise products. Yes, I don't think kids should be on social media. So yeah. Final one, diamonds, there's loads of them, but apparently they're rare, so sell, they're rare, so sell for major stacks. Yeah, and plus the fact that there's now, like, artificial diamonds that are just as pretty as a real thing, but yeah, diamonds are definitely a big scam. That was a Ask Reddit thread with some scams. Let me know in the comments what you think is a scam, and I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to be reading through some Ask Reddit threads for ridiculous history facts, and I'm going to commentate on them here. So, first off, we got, in 1895, the entire state of Ohio had only two cars. Both cars still managed to smash into each other. That's ridiculous, and of course that would be happening in Ohio. Next one, 101 years ago, a massive tank of molasses burst open in Boston, causing a sticky wave that killed 21 people and injured well over 100. The Great Molasses Flood spread around 35 miles per hour. That's ridiculous. I thought molasses was slow. Didn't realize it could be so destructive and rest in peace to those 21 people. That's crazy. Abraham Lincoln's son, son, Robert Todd Lincoln, was president at three different presidential assassinations. After McKinley, he decided not to accept any more invitations. I would have stopped at probably the first one. That is crazy. I'd be, yeah. Oh, man. That's tough. When Alexander the Great was a child, he was reprimanded by a teacher for wastefully throwing away two whole fistfuls of rare incense into a sacrificial fire. When he was an adult and captured Gaza, which happened to be the prime agricultural source of the incense he wasted, he sent home 18 tons of it to give to the same teacher as a gift. That's actually kind of funny. Alexander the Great was wild. <laughs> That's just unhinged. The first known political cartoon is Egyptian. Shows Hat Hatshepsut, the only woman pharaoh, pegging her lover, chief architect, Senmut. There's a children's book called The Pharaoh's Secret and kind of gets into that. That is kind of sketchy. <laughs> the entire country of Malta was awarded the George Cross for its efforts in World War II. It is still on their flag. That's cool. This is like a positive, like, I guess, making the best of the situation. Next one, Karl Marx's great, great, dot, 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 grandson has a YouTube video of him doing parkour called Exclamation Marks. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny. Um... I watched it, it's not actually bad or anything, just funny considering his lineage. That's actually kind of funny. <laughs> Former U.S. President Andrew Jackson was approached by a man who pulled a gun on him. Smaller history fact, this is the first assassination attempt on a U.S. President. 
The man pulled the trigger and the cap went off, but the gunpowder failed to light. The man pulled a second gun and fired, but the gun again failed to light. Gunpowder failed to light. The assassin tried to get away, but not before Andrew Jackson got him and beat the crap out of him with a cane. Amazing. Wow. Man got lucky with firearms not discharging. Nowadays, oh man, it's crazy. Potatoes were not a very popular food in France. Like they were seen as only fit for animals. Not only that, but they were considered generally not digestible by humans. So a pharmacist named Parmentier knew that they were good food and wanted to popularize them among the working class. So we got a two-acre farm to grow potatoes and placed armed guards around it at all times. People assumed the guards meant something very valuable was growing there, so they began to steal the potatoes. That's how it became. potatoes became popular in France's working class. I've actually heard that story before. That's kind of funny. Um, he also told his guards to accept bribes and not to actually catch anyone. That's cool. Potatoes are actually good quality carb, so thank you. <laughs> During the Cold War, there was an idea to drop extra large condoms labeled medium into the Soviets to make them think we were anatomically superior and to be more afraid of fighting us. Easily my favorite part of American history. That is kind of funny. <laughs> uh, American military members were also killed during the nuclear bombing in Japan when America commanded high, high command was informed of their presence. The response was something like, targets remain unchanged. That's kind of dark. Um, nuclear bombs should never be used. Pepsi once had the sixth largest military in the world after the price of Russian vodka couldn't cover the deal for Pepsi products, so they traded 17 sub submarines, a frigate, a cruiser, and a destroyer in a trade deal. Fun fact, the president at PepsiCo at the time told a natural security advisor, which is, we're disarming the USSR faster than you are. <laughs> That's funny. Pepsi. Gorbachev appeared in a pizza commercial. Jeez. That's crazy. Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, Freud, and Tito... We're all living in the same area of Vienna in 1913. That is actually crazy. Wow. Hitler, Stalin, Trotsky, Freud, and Tito. Jeez, that's wild. General Omar Bradley was stopped by MP during the Battle of Bul Bulge, Bulge in World War II due to them thinking he was a Nazi in infiltrator. The irony was he was stopped because he identified the capital of Illinois as Springfield when the officers thought it was Chicago. A lot of people think that... <laughs> Capital of Illinois is Chicago. It's funny. Monte Neg Negro technically was in war with Japan for 101 years when they signed a peace treaty in 2006. Then they aligned with Russia in the Russo-Japanese -Jap War, and they declared war on Japan, but they forgot to peace. Wow, that's crazy, actually. In 1967, Australian Prime Minister Harold Holt disappeared while swimming in the ocean. He presumed to be to have drowned Naturally, that year, we named a swim center after him in memoriam. Added his name. Cool. That was an interesting one. Um, this one's a large one. I'm going to skip that. I'll read two more smaller ones here. Once FDR died, Truman didn't know about the Manhattan Project, but he had found out he subtly tried to tell Stalin they were working on something big. Stalin was like, yeah, dude, I knew before you did. You see it so many spies in America. That's crazy. Wow. I'm excited for the movie on the Manhattan Project to come out later this summer uh, with Robert Downey Jr. Um, Henry Cavendish, the man who is vital in the discovery of gases and discovered hydrogen, inherited a ton of money from his uncle and built a special castle, I think. He was incredibly introverted, so it was designed so he would never meet or see any of his servants. He communicated with them with notes only. He did, however... Appreciate other scientists coming to visit and talk. His most most of his works come from after his death, of course. But I found this guy interesting. That is kind of interesting. That guy was very shut in. It sounds like um, I don't think I could ever do without that much human interaction. I feel like I'd get lonely. But to each their own. Hope you found this video fun and useful. Smash that like button. I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be reading through Ask Reddit and commentating on. What is a scam that people refuse to view as a scam because it's been part of their culture for a long time? So we're going through some scams. Love it. Top comment. Engagement rings that cost multiple months of salary and must be diamonds or else they're worthless. That's a tradition that's not even 100 years old. It's just a result of an insanely effective ad campaign by the diamond industry. De Beers. They were smart with that because now everyone needs diamond rings or you don't love the person. It's sad. <laughs> Um, you can get a nice diamond ring for about as much as a set of tires nowadays. The lab growns have changed everything, and it's not really a big deal now. Yeah, lab grown diamonds. Let's go. 
All right, next one. Private health insurance. You pay premiums every month if only to find out it doesn't cover what needs to be done. Yep, health insurance is rough. Very rough. Herbalife. Huge scam. Every other multi-level marketing company, I agree. Uh, very popular one in Canada is Arbon Supplements. $60 for a protein powder that's got like 10 grams of actual quality protein. That's garbage. Go to a supplement store. Don't go to Herbalife. You can save yourself a lot of money and get a much better product. People forced to get married or else your relationship is not valid. Let's be honest. The prices of a classic wedding are insane and all for one day and mostly to impress others. That is kind of true. Um, obviously, a big wedding is a night to remember, but yeah, it. <laughs> I think in recent years, some people just try to go over the top and go into debt because they want to have their wedding perfect. Not always the wisest thing. The lottery, just state-sponsored gambling for poor people. Yep, that is true. I never gamble. I don't even buy lottery tickets ever because I know it's a scam and they're there for them to make money, not for you to make money. Multi-level marketing schemes. As I said, there's many of these. Uh, Arbon being a very popular one in Canada. Um, and Herbalife. Those those of the such are kind of, yeah, they are scams. <laughs> the people at the top make the money and then it's kind of like trickles down slowly. And the people at the bottom are the ones making all the sales. So the people at the top get rich. Here's a beefy one. The concept that you work from 16 to 18 years of age until 65, 70 and somehow anything in between that is wrong. There's too much poop interconnected to keep people slaving away only to blink and one day you're 60. Before someone tries to justify, well, you should live within your means or save better, realize that part of the problem, the reason retirement age keeps getting pushed back is to keep people working as long as possible since the life expectancy keeps going up, in my opinion. That's true. Yeah, I think retirement ages, <laughs> yeah, I see them getting pushed back. We live in a weird world. I think four day work week could work very well for a lot of people. Um, companies just have profits that they want to hit and it just makes things kind of rough. So <laughs> scamming, number one scam, tipping, I guess, uh, makes no sense to me as a European. Yeah, in American, um, in North America, like I recently just went and bought a, what was it? I think it was just a few drinks that were cans of drinks, not a drink that was made for me. And there was an option to tip. Now I've been seeing tips pop up at a very large amount of establishments. Like now, if you go to get a coffee, you're basically expected to tip, um, bubble tea. I tipped the other day, uh, food service, food service. I understand tipping. Like that makes sense. If someone's bringing you a food and, you know, making sure that you're enjoying your, your time there, that makes sense. But it's when this gets into like, just if you're buying groceries and they ask for a tip, Oh, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Tipping is to make up for poor wages, I think. Um, yeah, rough. Religion and Arby's. <laughs> it's a pretty inflammatory statement you're making. Arby's is the only fast food I'll eat after working there. McDonald's and Wendy's. McDonald's all frozen, fried in the same stationary grease. Quarter pounds are grilled fresh, though. Wendy's is all completely frozen. That freshness guarantee is purely marketing. Interesting. I don't know if I'd take those claims as real, but... Um, Religious is subscription based fairy tales. Oh my god. Wow. This one is a spicy one. This is a very spicy ass credit. Another one saying religion. Catholics in Poland. It exists only elites from the poor and uneducated, a lost generation that was raised during communism regime. Yeah. Well, that's three in a row for religion. Um, the fact that it's very hard to find a job making any kind of decent money without going to college, you have to have a crap ton of money to go to college. I agree, that is a scam. I think we should be you know, especially number one, I think we should have more people building houses in the world. So I think carpentry should be free. That's my opinion. Valentine's Day. Yeah. Valentine's Day is every day. You shouldn't be spending all the money just on one specific day. Uh, diamonds. I'm sure people can create much cheaper artificial gems that'll look more fancy than diamonds. Not to mention artificial diamonds are cheaper too. Yeah. It's like we make better ones artificially, but genocide is what makes them worth more. <laughs> Jeez. People like genocide ones better. That is true. Blood of the innocent. Yeah. Wow. Chiropractors. Yeah, that's one that I think is, uh, hmm. Oh, Shiari malfunction, which is a brain malfunction. Yeah. So some people do benefit from chiropractors, but I feel like some people also just go there because it makes them feel good and it doesn't actually set up actual potential um, benefits. Yeah. This one, it seems like it's actually due. It does have benefit, but for some, there's not. 
temporary tax, tipping and astrology, religious, biggest scam of all time, insurance, extended warranties, a lot of college degrees, rent increases due to market value and no upgrades to the property, Ponzi schemes are seen, seen as a legitimate investment in some cultures, hashtag scam, hashtag culture, oh wow, yeah, these are some pretty good ones, um, paying book time at the mechanic, basically every type of repairs, categorizing given the amount of time it takes and should take to complete persons who write this book are very generous to mechanic with as many as five minute fixes being billable for one hour one to two hours being billable for up to five hours industry people see this as being completely normal yeah i didn't realize that was much of a scam i'm getting near the bottom of the comments so i read a few more but dang mechanics i feel like it was always a scam i'm paying like i went and got my codes read once in my car it was 80 dollars i just bought on amazon myself a 30 dollar code reader and i can do it myself now so yeah amazon Shout out. I'll read a few more. Microtransactions, bingo, insurance, bingo, weight watchers, yep. Property tax, electoral, electoral college, and yeah, funeral homes. Cool. Those are some big scams. I've yeah, I think a few of them are very much uh scams, but it was cool to read through this and kind of react to it. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.